Hi everyone. Today let's have some idea about intraaortic balloon pump. This machine is used to assist the heart for coronary perfusion. The inventor of this machine is Mr. Adrian Kantrowitz. In 1968, initial use of IABP started in clinical practice. At the beginning, it was a very big surgical procedure to insert or remove the, uh, the balloon. Uh, and later on, it is 1979 after subsequent development in IABP technology, a dramatic improvement it got with the introduction of a percutaneous balloon at the bedside. Before starting, we should know about the coronary circulation, how it occurs. This occurs during the diastolic phase of the heart. During diastolic phase, some amount of blood is moving through aorta to the coronary arteries to the myocardium. And the important thing is, the rest of all the body is getting perfused during the systolic phase and only the heart is getting perfused during the diastolic phase. Intraaortic balloon pump It's a mechanical device that increases myocardial oxygen supply while at the same time increasing cardiac output. Increases, increasing cardiac output uh, increases coronary blood flow and therefore the myocardial oxygen delivery. The cardiac output means the, blood, uh, the amount of uh, blood pumped out from uh, the heart in a minute. It is equal to the stroke volume times the heart rate. The stroke volume means the amount of blood pumped from the ventricle in a single heartbeat. Let's have a look at this uh, diagram here. It is the balloon inside the aorta. It is in the inflation. Okay, it is inflated, and so it is in the diastolic phase. So the balloon is inflating during the diastolic phase, and uh, it is pushing the blood through the aorta to the coronary circulation during the diastolic phase, and it is here. It is deflation. It is, we can see here the balloon is deflated and it is allowing, allowing the blood, uh, blood flow through the iota. Let's see how it works. It consists of a cylindrical polyethylene balloon that sits in the iota approximately 2 cm from the left subclavian artery and counterpulse. Counterpulsation means the balloon inflates during the diastole and deflates at the systole. Let's go back to the diagram here. It is see the inflation and it is in the diastolic phase. Okay. And the, during inflation, it is obstructing the aorta and pushing the blood through the coronal circulation. Here it is in the systolic phase, it is deflated and it is allowing the blood circulation through the aorta to the down part of the body. The effects. The effects on the inflation during diastole, it increases the blood flow to the coronary arteries and it increases the oxygen delivery. Here, effects of deflation during systole, it decreases the cardiac workload and it decreases the afterload. The afterload means it is resistance of the ventricle to, the over, uh, to overcome during systole to eject the blood. And it decreased, it decreased, decreased myocardial uh, oxygen consumption, and it increased the cardiac output. Here, the diagram again. It is a diastolic phase, and the balloon is inflated, and it is pushing the blood. And it is in the systolic phase, and it is deflated, and it is allowing the blood through the aorta. We are usually uh, using two types of gas, mainly uh, carbon dioxide and helium to inflate the balloon. The carbon dioxide has a higher uh, solubility in the blood and uh, helium, it has the, uh, see, it is often used because it's low density to facilitate rapid transfer of gas from console to the balloon and it is also easily absorbed into the blood in case of rupture of the balloon. That's why it mainly it is, uh, we are using helium to inflate the balloon. These are the important controls here. Trigger. 
frequency augmentation. The trigger means the physiological signal from the patient that in identify the beginning of a new cardiac cycle. And uh, we are using trigger uh, ECG and pressure. If the patient is with uh, continuous uh, arterial pressure monitoring and continuous ECG monitoring. So either uh, ECG or arterial, we can use it. We can switch each other to uh, the, get know the systolic phase and diastolic phase, where to inflate, where to deflate. Okay, here it is frequency, the inflation and deflation of the balloon in relation to the patient's cardiac cycle. So we can increase the frequency like uh, one is to, uh, from one is to one to one is to two, one is to three, one is to four, like that. One is to, so one cardiac, one heartbeat, during the one beat, uh, the machine will give two uh, times of this one, two times of inflation. So the perfusion of the coronary cir circulation will be more and we will get a good cardiac output. The augmentation here is the uh, inflation uh, and deflation, inflation of the heart, balloon, the process of becoming greater in size of the balloon. This is the augmentation. We have a percentage of augmentation like 100% uh, is the maximum and we can uh, reduce uh, during the weaning process to the 70, 80%, 50% uh, like that. Here it is augmented, augmented diastolic pressure. This is the outcome we are getting. Here it's, just have a look at this. The pump inflates on diastole and creates an artificial higher diastolic pressure. The diastolic, this diastolic pressure will become the highest pressure. But it's not the accurate diastolic pressure. It is augmented diastolic pressure. Why? because the machine has augmented the pressure during diastole. Let's see the graph here, it will be more clear. So this we have here a normal ECG and the pressure uh, line uh, and this is the augmentation from the machine. Okay, here this highlighted portion is the diastolic phase and this diastolic phase will be the time for balloon inflation. Here is the midpoint of the T wave triggers the balloon inflation. So from here to here, the peak R wave, the machine will inflate. Okay, so the pressure, the augmented diastolic pressure means, it's here, see, the pressure is going like this and normally if unassisted beat the pressure will be dropping like this. This is the unassisted pressure. Okay, if assisted pressure, the balloon is inflated and it is augmented, so the pressure will be going like this, high. So it is more than this. This is what we talk about here. It is artificially higher diastolic pressure. The diastolic pressure became the highest pressure that's what here it's happened so highest pressure because of the augmentation okay let's move on here we can uh, see the diagrammatic representation again the uh, graph here is uh, ECG normal and uh, we can uh, see look at this in the dichrotic nose and uh, uh, pressure radiation the augmented or augmentation of the balloon and deflation of the balloon here see the inflation at the onset of the diastole IABP uh, inflation occurs giving rise to sharp V on the arterial form this is the one and it affects increased coronary perfusion and here it is going down so this is the deflation it's the starting of uh, systolic phase here it occurs at the end of the diastole and before the systole resulting in the reaction of aortic and diastolic systolic pressure it the effects will be like this decreased after load decreased cardiac work uh, decreased myocardial oxygen consumption and increased cardiac output so here 
we can see indication and contraindication of the AB permission. We have to use, we have uh, to avoid. The indication, left ventricle failure, the cardiogenic shock, myocardial infarction, myocarditis, cardiomyopathy, severe myocardial conduction, septic shock, and drug induced. Mechanical compli uh, complication of the acute MI and post myocardial infarction, ventricular irritability, unstable angina, refractory to medical therapy, support for high risk PTCA patients, fail to PTCA, thrombolytic therapy of uh, acute MI, failure to wean from cardiopulmonary bypass during the open heart surgery. Uh, low output syndrome, stabilization of high risk patients undergoing general anesthesia, bridge to uh, transplant operations, stunned myocardium. Here it is uh, contraindications severe aortic valve insufficiency, aortic dissection, severe peripheral vascular disease, irreversible brain damage. So, the main thing is the aorta, if the aorta is compromised. You cannot use IABP for that patient. It's not the candidate for IABP. So let's go for the nursing management for IABP. Here you go. It's neurological assessment, level of consciousness, reaction of the pupils, appropriate sedation levels. If the patient is uh, sedated and on ventilator, so we should uh, avoid fighting uh, against the ventilator or like avoid unnecessary movement. So uh, let's observe for that the appropriate sedation levels and movement of extremities should extremely uh, be conscious about the movements of the extremity uh, to avoid any kink of the balloon. Here is uh, cardiovascular assessment, continuous ass assessment of uh, hemodynamics, of course. We should uh, monitor the vital signs all the time and uninterrupted ECG maintenance if uh, trigger source of uh, is from ECG. Uh, it's very important also if the if there is any artifact in the ECG, the machine cannot detect the uh, uh, diastolic or systolic phases, so uh, the machine will stop working. So if uh, if the diast if the diastolic phase it cannot be detected by the from the ECG, the, how the machine will uh, trigger? The machine cannot the, if the machine trigger it will be against the heart. I mean if it is inflating during the systolic phase it will obstruct the aorta and it will be disastrous and auscultate uh, heart sounds at least uh, q4 hourly assess the extremities uh, frequently uh, mainly the color sensation temperature pulses uh, mainly because uh, uh, the insertion side usually we prefer to the uh, femoral axis, femoral artery. If the femoral artery, if there is any thrombus, it may occlude the circulation uh, to the distal part of the uh, extremity. So we, we can, we have to assess the color sensation. If there is any compromise of the circulation, we should notify the doctor and uh, we should have a concern about that. And here it is a respiratory assessment, uh, monitor ABGs as ordered, auscultate the breath sound and encourage for coughing and deep breathing exercises if the patient is uh, conscious oriented and if it is possible, uh, give him uh, spirometry and ask for uh, spirometry exercises. And here it is uh, renal assessment is also very important to measure the urine output Q1 hourly, notify the physician if less than uh, 0.5 ml per hour and the strict uh, intake and output monitoring because uh, we are usually going through the femoral artery and it is going to the abdominal aorta and thoracic aorta and to the arc of the aorta so uh, during the access or if the balloon is misplaced and it is obstructing the uh, coronary I mean uh, if it is obstructing the renal arteries the circulation to the kidney will be compromised and the urine production will be diminished as this, uh, the first sign of the renal uh, compromising is uh, diminished urine, oliguria. So we should uh, uh, concern about that. 
should be notified to the doctor if there is oliguria. And here it is uh, gastrointestinal assessment, assess the bowel sound at least uh, Q4 thoroughly and nutrition is very important thing also. We should in, uh, include dietitian uh, to uh, get a visit uh, and uh, in GTO, GT feed if appropriate uh, to maintain the good nutrition. Hemot hematology assessment is assess for bleeding or hematoma from the insertion site, monitor platelet counts and coagulation profiles as ordered. This inflation and deflation of the balloon will distract the platelets, so there is a chance to get a thrombocytopenia. And the patient will be on uh, anticoagulant, so we should see the coagulation profile in between. And uh, the patient should receive the anticoagulants unless they're medically contraindicated to avoid uh, thrombus formation. Here's the musculoskeletal assessment. Passive range of uh, passive and active uh, range of exercises for the limbs and passive for the affected limb, which where we uh, get the access to to the aorta. And here is active range of uh, exercises for the unaffected extremities. Uh, to facilitate more uh, circulation and uh, prevent uh, DVTs and all. To assess the uh, distal limb perfusion Q1 hourly. Um, patient, patient's leg should not be flexed more than 30 degrees while IBP is in situ. Because uh, if more than 30 degrees can be uh, making uh, for the balloon or any obstruction uh, for the balloon will uh, compromise the IABP assistance. And here do not elevate the head of the patient, uh, head of the bed uh, more than 30 degree also may cause a uh, uh, kinking of the line. And skin assessment, assessment uh, for skin breakdown frequently because of long uh, time, uh, I mean long time on the bed in the same position and uh, limited the movement. Uh, may cause uh, pressure ulcer, so we should uh, log roll the patient and uh, to prevent uh, pressure ulcer. Here is the general assessment and management. Uh, to here, assess insertion side every shift uh, for redness or and uh, oozing. Check limb temperature Q1 hourly. Change the dressing under aseptic technique uh, if there is any oozing noted. And it is very important things to notify the medical officer if the change of con conscious level and symptoms of aortic dissection, uh, evidence of limb ischemia, hematoma or bleeding from the insertion site, evidence of balloon leak and rupture, decreased urine output, and stable hemodynamics, malfunctioning of the machine. Okay, let's see uh, weaning process. If our goal achieved, so we should uh, wean off the machine and uh, get rid of this. So here is the weaning process, a gradual reduction of the frequency and augmentation, or it's a combination of both. Uh, con constant monitoring of patient's hemodynamics and patient condition. When weaning by the uh, weaning Meaning by reducing the ABP augmentation alone, so it should not go uh, less than 50 percentage. Should maintain the 50 percentage at least. Here it is uh, IABP complications uh, from the vascular side is uh, arterial injury like perfusion or uh, dissection, aortic perforation, aortic dissection, femoral artery thrombosis, peripheral embolization, femoral vein cannulation limb ischemia, visceral ischemia. Here is the balloon related uh, can be perforation, tear, rupture, incorrect positioning, gas embolization. So the other kind of complication is like uh, hemorrhage and infection. Hemorrhage because of the thrombocytopenia or uh, the uh, anticoagulant therapy and the uh, chance of infection also. Okay, let's wind up. Here I want to just emphasize some points. Uh, these are the points. The primary goal of IABP treatment is to increase myocardial oxygen supply and decrease myocardial oxygen demand. 
Decreased urine output after the insertion of IABP can occur because of juxtarenal balloon position. It's a malpositioning. Uh, hemolysis from mechanical damage to red blood cells can reduce the hematocrit by up to 5%. Because of this, we need to uh, monitor the hemoglobin and platelets and all this in between. And suboptimal timing of uh, inflation and deflation of the balloon produces hemodynamic instability. That's why we need to continuously monitor hemodynamics of the patient. And IAPP is thrombogenic, always anticoagulate the patient to prevent the clot formation. Never switch the balloon off while in situ. There is a high chance of uh, getting thrombus. So, and it is very fatal also. So, make sure you are not switching off the machine while the balloon is in situ. And uh, thank you.